Today our video is gonna be on recovery, and I'm gonna show you why pool walking is not only good for cardio, flexibility, mobility, and all those other things, but it's also really good for recovery from weightlifting. So I'm gonna show you that today. So what I like about water is that water is a form of resistance. But the big thing I really like about doing my cardiovascular stuff and just my, my walking, et cetera, in the pool is that it's low impact. So if I'm in four feet deep of water, my knees, my ankles, my hips, my lower back, they're getting all of this range of motion, but no impact. And that really cannot be done any other way. You know, even the treadmill just walking has an impactive ability to it. When you're in the water, you don't have any of that. So for restorative properties, especially for joint health, I don't think that there's any better way to get your walking in in the pool. The next big thing that I really like about the pool is its mobility factor. When you're buoyant in four feet of water or a normal slap or swim pool, you can take longer strides and move in ways that would be very, very hard if one, you're injured, two, you're a bigger athlete, or three, your balance just sucks like most people's do. I can take a longer lunge, I can kick back, I can move in weird ways that normal, everyday, standing out in the open air is not gonna allow me to do nearly as well unless I'm a really good athlete. So what I find is that as I got bigger and I got thicker, that doing lunging and doing all this other stuff was actually pretty hard on my joints, but in the water, I could go even further out on mobility and I really had no problems doing it. So there are gonna be some exercises I'm gonna show you that's gonna have that in it, but just remember that the pool is a way to increase your mobility in those movements. So the first big exercise that I like to use in the pool after 24 hours after a hard leg day is just a high knee walk. So what you're gonna see me is walking forward, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exaggerate how high I pick up my knee. So, let's do it. I get a lower back stretch, I get some glute activation, and I get really good range of motion, like I'm doing a deep squat, but I'm in buoyant water. So it allows me to do it from multiple laps. I get a lot of range of motion, I get a lot of mobility, but I have no impact on my joints, and I can actually extend how high I pick up my knee because I don't have to worry about the balance issue. The water actually balances it for me. The next one that we're gonna shoot is a backward walk with a kick. Now why I like doing this is obviously it's hard to do out in the open air, but two, I get a lot of glute activation and it seems to give me a nice stretch on the hip flexor, which is a common problem for a lot of people that sit all day. So let's look at this one. suffering from lower back pain, that backwards walking with a kick can give you some massive release, but also allows you to actually turn on that glute and get the lower back kind of activated without agitating it. So if you have a sit down desk job or whatever, this exercise is amazing for you. A common issue with almost everyone, but including lifters, is the adductor muscles or the groin. And the way to get that flexible can be complicated out in the real world. But in the water, we can actually do an exercise that allows us to stretch farther without the repercussions of what we weigh because we're buoyant, we're not weightless, but close to. So when we do these side lunges, it's important that you watch that I keep my feet placed the same position as my head. So I don't turn my foot out or in, I try to keep them just like this. That way it forces the hip and the adductors and all those muscles to get loose. So if you're suffering from any kind of back pain, um, you're having problems getting down in a sumo squat or your squat mobility and flexibility is not so good for kettlebell swings or any other type of endeavor, try these exercises out for a period of a few weeks or months doing a couple laps of this exercise and you'll find that reaching down to the bar, grabbing things off the floor, picking stuff up off 
in the garage off the floor, it becomes much, much easier. So let's take a look at this exercise. Sometimes it's really hard to hit those adductors. I noticed that if I do this in between my leg days, which if you watch my other videos, leg days are every 72 hours. If I do this 24 hours after my hardest day, which is Friday on Saturday or Sunday morning, my hips feel amazing to squat on Tuesday. So this actually is a huge in restoration. But because I've lightened myself up in this water and I can take longer strides due to the balancing of the water, I can actually increase my mobility without too much detriment, too much weight. The next big movement I really, really like is just a stiff-legged walk. The reason is, is that for a lot of us, our hip flexors are insanely tight. And they're not only tight because they're inflexible, but they're also tight because they're weak. This exercise, because of the water resistance, is going to give me some hip flexor strengthening, but also can cause us to have a relief in lower back pain. This exercise is awesome. Not only does it make your legs look amazing in the hip flexor area, but it also turns on your lower abdominals, which can help flatten your stomach and also give you better bracing while squatting and deadlifting. So in closing, two to three times a week, if you don't really work out that much and only two times a week, 24 hours after leg day and watch your mobility, your technique and all of your strength go up dramatically.